is our seventh lesson, Carrier Letter, held by Gulchakhra Bakhtiara Mnataeva. In our lesson today, we'll speak about job, work, carrier letter, learn different phrases and expressions related to work, do tasks, speak about losing job, watch videos about job loss and take an interesting test and read the proverbs related to work. In this picture, we can see different jobs, different positions, different works. So, what can we say? Work and job is an integrated part of our life. It enriches our life. It's the meaning of our life. It gives off us responsibility to live further. It provides our life with a sense of fulfillment, productivity. It conveys a sense of responsibility. So let's see what is career, what is work, and what is job. Okay, a career letter is a series of jobs from the lower pad with less responsibility to the highest pad with the most responsibility within company or particular profession. If someone has a good work ethic, they should move up the career letter. Synonymous for career letter, it's an going in advance, going advance, upgrading, elevation, promotion in his job, uh, career development, progress, job, work, opportunity is related words to career. They are connected with each other. So what is work and what is job? Let's see the difference between them. Job. Job is a regular activity that you do an occupation and profession. You receive money for this activity. Job is regular. It's a noun. Work. The word work is more general than job. Work refers to the activities done to accomplish a goal. Work can be done both inside an official job and outside a job. Work can be a verb and an accountable. It's a noun. For example, do I have full-time job? I love my job. I help people become fluent in English. I work from 8 until 5 today. I have some work to do in the garden. Okay, have you seen the difference between them? Let's see expressions and phrases to use at a work. Crunch the numbers. Do a lot of calculations. Take off. It increases or becomes popular very quickly. People person. Person who has a great social skills and loves interacting with the people. Very sociable people, we can say. Eager beaver. An enthusiastic person who works very hard. Hold the fort. Have the responsibility for something or care of somebody while rather the people are away. Golden handshake. A large sum of money that is given to somebody when they leave their job or persuade them to leave their job. Walking paper. The letter or notice dismissing somebody from a job. Cash co. It's the part of a business that always makes a profit that provides money for the rest of the business. Have a lot on your plate. It means you have a lot of work and responsibilities at the moment. Work and employment vocabulary. Application. A letter formed with the details of your qualifications, skills, experience, set to a firm company with a request to be considered for a job or position. In other words for this is resume, we can say curriculum, later we can say background. A person's education, qualification, and work experience. For example, we say he is from good background. Bonus. It's extra money. Money added to someone's wages, especially as a reward for good work. Employee. Someone who is paid to work for someone else. Trainee. A person who is practicing the skills of a particular job or profession. Hire. Employ someone. Interview. An oral examination of a candidate for a job. Make redundant. Dismiss because of not being needed. Layoff, we can say. Notice. Advance warning or intention to resign. Over time. Work more than the number of hours required by contract. For example, you're working hours uh, 36, but you work 40 hours a week. Let's learn more words. Phrasal verbs about work. Burnout. Be extremely tired. If she doesn't stop working so hard, she will be burn himself or herself. It means she will be ill, she will be very tired. Call off, cancel. They have called off the meeting. Carry out, meaning do a particular piece of work, research to do something. We need to carry out more research. Slack off, 
it means do something with less energy and effort than is us usual or necessary. Workers usually slack off, don't do their best, we can say. Take over, take control of something. Take over, take control of something. I intend that you shall take over the business. It means you are in charge of this business, you run this business. Work out to develop in a successful way. Things have worked out quite well for us. Draw up, meaning prepare something in writing, especially an official document. The contract was drawn up last year. Fill in for to do somebody's job for a short time while they are not there. Could I feel for him? He asked. Take on, employ someone, hire someone. She was taken on as a trainee for probation time, for example. Tell someone run by tell someone about an idea or plan so that they can give you their opinion you had better run it by your manager first it means you should discuss it with your manager hand in to give something to a person in authority you must all hand in your projects by the end of next week knock off stop working let's knock off for lunch let's have a rest let's pause make a pause lay off Stop employing someone because there is not enough work for them to do. 200 workers at the factory have been laid off. Dismiss it. Fire it. Knuckle down. Start working harder. I'm going to have to knuckle down to someone serious study. It makes doing my best to do my best. And these are tasks for you. In this task you should read the ads and uh, read the sentence and say whether they are true or false. Here you should find the right job for these people reading the description of their character. And the next task is you should speak about, tell about your job using these new words. You should say what is good job for you, what is bad job for you using the new vocabulary. And you should match the words in column A to the column B and learn all these words and phrases. Okay, now let's speak about job loss. When we have job, we are happy, we have everything, we have no problems. But when we lose our job, what happens? We are depressed, we are out of balance, we are stressed, we are unhappy. So let's watch what you are the person who lost his job. I lost my job. Now what? How am I going to take care of my family? How am I going to take care of my mom? I remember when I walked out of the job that I was working at a time in a supermarket. I was making minimum wage. When I was walking home, taking the SkyTrain, that was the question that I was thinking, what am I supposed to do? It's very nerve wracking. It's very frustrating and very depressing thinking about how I'm going to pay rent. How am I going to eat? And, and do I you know, need to use my credit card when I've already maxed out my credit card? What am I going to do when I'm already in debt? And over the years, even after that job, and that was the only job I've ever had in my entire life, right? Running my own business, getting fired by clients, right? Sometimes even I do a good job, you know, the clients, sometimes they don't like what I, what I did. And getting laid off by clients and working with different people is very frustrating. And I know maybe you're going through the same thing that on the surface, you want to be calm and controlled and collected. But deep inside, you're, it's nerve wracking. You don't want to share that with your family. Well, first of all, you're thinking it won't help. Even you share, it just makes them worry too much. And you just don't feel like sharing. You think you want to take on this burden. And today I want to give you some ideas and some tips that could help you and over the years what has helped me. There are really three choices when you lost your job. Number one, you could go back and get another job. Maybe you kind of polish your resume, update your resume, you send it on onto these sites and, and talk to people and hand out resumes and you try to find another job. Sometimes I've seen people, they got laid off not because of performance, it's because sometimes the upper management made some bad decisions or the industry is trending downwards so there's a lot of downsizing. Just recently I was reading an article, uh, Hong Kong Bank, HSBC laying off tens of thousands of people, right? And Hong Kong Bank's got money but because of whatever structure that they have or they want to cut back 
the overhead, they laid off a lot of people. May not be a fault of your own, right? If you know what I'm talking about, comment below. So you could look for an other job, and that's always a possibility. And in some cases, maybe you can get the similar job that pays you the same, or maybe, unfortunately, you might need to take on a job that actually pays you less. Or in some cases, the skill that you have is no longer relevant, that you couldn't even get a job. It would take you months to do it. That's one scenario. Number two, you could start your own business. Right? Some people, a lot of people, they think, well, you know what, I got laid off, I'm gonna start my own business. I always say the worst time to start a business is when you have no money. Because you can help but make decisions that may not be best for yourself and for the company long term because you're desperate. You cannot make wise decisions when you're desperate. Michael Gerber talks about that in his book, E-Myth. Now, what is the E-Myth? E-Myth is the entrepreneur myth. And Michael talks about that most entrepreneurs are actually not entrepreneurs. They are employees suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure, right? The employees, they're thinking about, hey, you know what, that's something that I could do better than that. Or, or I could create a product, I could create a widget, and I could go out there and start my own business. But most of the time, almost all the time, they don't have the business skills or business acumen to make a business work. So that's not a very good reason to start a business. Just like not everyone is supposed to play golf, not everyone is supposed to be a basketball player. You can play as a hobby, right? You can play business as a hobby, but to be a professional business person, to be a successful entrepreneur, that's a whole different story. But there is an option if that is what you want to do, but knowing that it's gonna be very, very, very difficult. It's gonna take years. Business don't make money in, in months. Business take years to make money. So you have to ask yourself, are you prepared for that? Right? Are you ready for that? Are you in a financially viable position to do that? Or number three, you could develop a high income skill. Now, what is a high income skill? I define a high income skill as a skill set that could make you $10,000 or more per month. It is not a job, it is a skill set. It is something that you know, an expertise, a skill that you have. You could go to the marketplace in exchange for money, right? It could be graphic designing if you're very, very good. It could be website designing, right? It could be copywriting, it could be closing. There's so many different high income skills and some high income skills that I teach. Why is high income skills so important? Because high income skill gives you financial confidence and financial confidence equals income at will, meaning you have the ability, you have the capabilities to generate income at will. Your income doesn't depend on the economy, it doesn't depend on a company, it doesn't depend on some investment, it depends on the only person that you could count on, yourself. That's Yeah, everything depends on yourself. You are the lord of your life. Dream big, set goals, take action. In life there is no such thing as impossible, it's always possible. People respond well to those that are sure of what they want. Every day you have a choice, say the same or change. If you don't give up on something you truly believe in, you will find a way. Every problem is a gift without problems wouldn't grow. Don't wait around for some man to fix something for you. Learn to do it yourself. Learn from the past, live in the present and create your future. Okay, welcome to the listening section. Now you will listen to the text and fill in the gaps. The global economic slowdown is hitting the auto industry hard. Demand for cars is down and car makers are having to cut costs. The latest casualty in this crisis is the US giant Chrysler. It has just announced it will slash its white collar workforce by a quarter. This means 5,000 employees will lose their jobs. Chrysler's CEO, Bob Nardelli, emailed his workers with a very gloomy message. These are truly unimaginable times for our industry. Never before have auto industry sales fallen at such a fast rate, he wrote. Mr. Nardelli also had bad news for his blue-collar workers. Chrysler will also axe 1,825 workers at two of its assembly plants. This news will send a worrying message to other auto manufacturers around the world. Worse could be to come for American car workers. There is a deal brewing that could see a merger between Chrysler and one of its rivals, General Motors. This could lead to tens of thousands more job losses as the new company makes deep cost cuts. 
Mr. Nardelli suggested that more structural changes are in the pipeline. We cannot operate as we have in the past, he warned. Chrysler is not in a position to restructure quickly. 90% of its market is in the USA, and consumers are having huge problems getting car loans in the credit crunch. The company also depends on sales of its gas-guzzling sports utility vehicles. American car buyers today are choosing to buy smaller, more fuel-efficient cars. So, it's our self-study section. You should learn, first you should find the definition, the translation of these words and learn them by heart. You will have these words in your mid-term test. More words, you should learn also these words. Every word, all words are related to work. Now, as we mentioned about, it's time for test. What job is best for you? It's a personality test. There are 10 questions. Choose your answer A, B, or C. You have 15 seconds to answer each question. Every answer will value from 0 to 20. Keep track of your points and see you your result at the end. Are you ready? Let's go. Question number 10. How would your friend describe you? Creative? Friendly? Or smart? Question number nine. You should choose one. Working hard, work fast, work smart. Which one do you like? Question number eight. Pick one. Do you like art? Do you like math or science? Do you like history? Question number seven. Which movie genre do you like the most? Action, horror or adventure? Next, comedy, inspirational or romance? Next, political, historical or documentary? Question number six. Which of these activities you enjoy the most? Doing exercises, going to the gym, watching movies, listening music, or reading a book, magazines. Question number five. Who would you join at a social event? Small group having lively discussions large group that is laughing a lot and several people playing a game question number four pick one agility strength dexterity question number three which problem would you solve first? Economical problems? Health care problems? Educational problems? Question number second. Which one are you? Extra introvert? Mix it. Question number one, the last question. Your style of thinking is quick thinker, creative thinker, and logical thinker.
Okay, see the results and read yourself. From 0 to 50. You're accepted everywhere. People love you. You're a good listener, good communicator. You have a good knowledge. Intuitive emotions. Jobs for you, appropriate jobs for you. Vice president, medical laboratory technician, teacher, therapist, social worker, police officer, nurse, market research scientist. From 50 to 100, you are an artist. You may be an artist. You are happy to be who are you. You live in a colorful world, sensual world, inspired by connections with the people. You are sociable. You have a planning for the future. Uh, you are unpredictable. Jobs appropriate for you. An architect. And so on. From 100 to 150, you are special. You can be whoever you like. You are a very self-confident person. Mm. If there is anything you love, it's a good challenge, big or small, and they firmly believe that given enough time and resources, they can achieve your goal. You are the leader. You are the president, lawyer, judge. From 150 to 200, the scientist, your genius, that's super hard to find, you enjoy theoretical, you enjoy theoretical and abstract concepts, dislike these organizations, your historian, doctor, pilot, computer programmer, astronaut. Okay, this was the end of our test. Thank you for watching. Let's read and learn proverbs related to worry. The day without worry, the night without sleep. The hand with the mud is the hand with the honey. Clean hand, empty stomach. The key that is used doesn't rust. Each person at his job is a lord. You tell by the word, not by the clothes. The more you strike the steel, the more beautiful it becomes. The ox that refuses to work in the field will get an axe. Where there are bees, there is honey. If you don't sow, you can't reap. When jobless, keep rattling the door. Who doesn't know tightness, doesn't know to relax? Who is lazy, dies from hunger. Who doesn't work, is heavy to earth. Who starts making the duck will also cook. Sew with one hand, reap with both. The weather helps him who works. The work of the youth is a blanket for the old. The chicken that cries at night will not lay eggs in the morning. Okay, this was the end of our lesson. See you next time. Bye.